Chocobo no Fushigi na Dungeon, or Chocobo's Mysterious Dungeon, is a port of Square's 1997 PlayStation game of the same name, developed by Tosei and published by Bandai in time for the Wonderswan's launch on March 4th, 1999. This timing makes Chocobo's Mysterious Dungeon the second ever Mystery Dungeon to be released on a handheld gaming system after 1996's Furai no Shira and GB for the Game Boy. While North America wouldn't see the original PlayStation release of this game, it would get the sequel, stubbornly named Chocobo's Dungeon 2, in November 1999. If you're not familiar with Mystery Dungeon games, then here's the lowdown. Mystery Dungeon is a subgenre of roguelike RPGs that takes you exploring randomly generated dungeons packed full of enemies, traps, and items. In most cases, the game is played from a top-down perspective and with movement and attacks in a turn-based fashion. When you move or attack, every other enemy on the map is given a turn to move or attack before control is restored to the player. If you die, you respawn outside the dungeon with all of your items gone and need to start the dungeon over from the beginning. Most games also won't let you escape the dungeon without the use of teleport spells or items, which means your only choices are to find one of those items, complete the dungeon, or die an unforgiving death. Chocobo's Mysterious Dungeon puts its own twist on the formula by making combat closer to real time. According to an interview printed in the PlayStation version strategy guide, Final Fantasy series creator Hironobu Sakaguchi insisted that the active time battle system must be included in the game at all costs, so they jammed it in there by developing it into a variation called Turn Active Time Battle. When you or an enemy enters attacking range, a gauge will appear under the character and fill up in real time. If you wait for the gauge to fill itself completely and press the attack button, you will attack with maximum power. If you press the attack button early when the gauge is only partially filled, you'll attack immediately in exchange for some severe damage fall off. This system sounds good on paper, but in practice, it's easily exploitable. You can attack an enemy, quickly move out of range before their attack bar fills up to make their bar reset, and then move back in to attack them. Since most enemies in the game don't attack until their bar is full, this has the potential to trivialize a lot of the fights in the game once you know the trick. As the name implies, Chocobo's Mysterious Dungeon puts you in the shoes of a Chocobo, the yellow bird race that Final Fantasy employs as a mascot. More specifically, you play as Poulet, a silent protagonist with a double pun as a name. You and your Moogle friend Atla were just minding your own business, looking for a place to stay in town while you look for rare items, but then you get tricked into falling into a dungeon. You both discover that dungeons are filled with mysterious and magical items, and after somehow managing to teleport your way back out to town, you find a place to stay and return to the dungeon to continue your search for rare items. The story really only serves as a basic framework to thrust you into the core gameplay loop and not much else. I know a handful of people who came to this game expecting the story and theatrics of a numbered Final Fantasy game, and many of them were disappointed with how bare bones the story was. And yes, at the surface level, this game is incredibly bare bones, but I don't mean it in a derogatory way. The town surrounding the dungeon is incredibly utilitarian. There are no more buildings there than there need to be, and everyone there has an explicit purpose. There's some beauty in that aspect of the design. The only real aesthetic flourish I can think of is how various decorative elements are introduced to the town over time based on the items you sell to the shopkeeper. Despite seeming bare bones at the surface, behind the scenes is an elaborate crafting system you can use to customize your armor by fusing armor pieces together or applying seeds to give them special effects. There are three dungeons total, and while that may seem short, the third is really long and the randomly generated element really adds to the replay value. Of all the games in the Wonderswan's four game launch lineup, this is the one that feels the most substantial and that caters to the hardcore gamer best. It's also the only one with something resembling an actual story. Sorry Goompei fans. Of course, the cost of making it in time for the Wonderswan's launch was stability. While I didn't experience any bugs during the research process for this episode, the Wonderswan port of Chocobo's Mysterious Dungeon has a bad reputation as being extremely buggy. Items will suddenly disappear from your inventory, or items you try to remove from your inventory will stick around for seemingly no reason, both of which you really don't want in a game that forces you to manage your inventory carefully. Freezes and soft resets are also reportedly common. It's unfortunate because otherwise, the port doesn't feel like a compromised version of the game at all. The dialogue in the game is very readable due to a large font size that was uncommon at the time for handheld RPGs. The polygonal graphics from the PlayStation version were swapped out with beautiful grayscale sprites, and the music is catchy and sounds great. 
It also really worked out that the PlayStation version would let you save every time you went a floor deeper, because that's available on this version as well and is super helpful when you're on the go. If it wasn't for the game's reputation as being really buggy, this would be just as good a way to experience it as playing the original PlayStation version. I really enjoyed my time with this game and I hope to play some more of it soon.